So I thought I'd just uh, do this little charger thing here, which is there yeah, for the 18650s, which I purchased recently, which I did a video on. And um, I thought I'd just have a look at this issue it's got. So let's just plug this in. So it's got a display test, it does. It's fine, but then it says, look, it goes up to half an amp straight away, even with nothing in it. And I don't think that's right somehow. Um, so I've decided to pull it apart, as you can see, and um, we'll have a look around it. I've had a quick look, I can't see anything obvious, and done some quick testing and stuff like that, but it all seems fine. So, I thought I'd get the little microscope out again, and um, inspect the PCB, and just see if we can see anything on here. And, um, there's nothing obvious. I mean, it's got basically two channels, so it's got obviously one battery and the other battery, you know, there and there. So it's got two circuits which are basically parallel to each other. So, which is which is good because means you can do comparison side by side of um, how it's working. Now, so far, I've actually seen anything wrong. Now, everything seems to be okay. Got off the side of the board. I can't see anything. Can't see any bridges. There's nothing obviously wrong. So, now, it's a bit of a pain. Yeah, there's not a lot I can do about it, it seems. Um, you know, because it's got the dual circuitry. Um, let's just bring this up a little bit. Um, so you got a resistor here, which is the negative side of the battery. Bring it over here a little bit. And the same down this side, see it's parallel, mirrored circuitry. And it's got a sense line here, goes to the IC. Um, this one here has a sense line here, goes through an IC. Resistor values are the same. Um, these resistor values are the same. These are, look like MOSFETs, just here. Um, let's get something to point with. All right, they're on there, they're on there look like MOSFETs, because they're on the DC line, which then are in series with that, which goes to this diode, which then goes to the positive line. So I believe that that's, uh, obviously um, polarity protection and so that is um, the actual switching off MOS set which does the control and you've got two other transistors here um, I haven't identified what they do yet there's another one down here as well um, so I can't actually identify what they're doing yet but you've got some obviously smoothing circuitry here a few capacitors in parallel um, so all this part here looks pretty simple, and you've got a whole bunch of circuitry here, which I'm not quite sure what all that's doing. There might be, um, and that, I'm measuring 2.5 volts off that device, and off these pins here. So I'm actually wondering if this is maybe a 3.3 volt device or something, I'm not sure, but the, um, there's a ground connection there. This is an nice grid C output, which goes through down to the second board which has got a display driver on it, display I see down there, not much on there really, just a few discrete parts for the backlight, things like that, so um, yeah, under there. yeah, a few parts under there, nothing particularly interesting, and um, I couldn't really, I've had a little look in there, I couldn't see anything wrong with any connections on this board, they all looked okay, um, I believe that the issue is on this board because of that display test when it first starts up, working perfectly, which means that it's not like a short on the um, connections to the actual display ring light. So I believe the fault was coming from here. But I've done testing around and I cannot find any differences between the two circuits, sets of circuitry. The voltages across the devices are exactly the same. And um, everything between the two channels matches. There's no discrepancies between any of them. So my, my initial thought was that being a, a high current resistance means it's probably the wrong part. So it's got a high voltage drop somewhere. Um, the only place I can see a high voltage drop is on these sense resistors here and here. And um, let's get closer on the microscope. I'll find it again, which seems to have shifted slightly. It's stuck to my mat on the bench, and it's a bit, um, it's gradually sagging down. So it's, it's letting go now. The mat's letting go. No problem. 
Last time I had this thing stuck in my voice. Uh, so, where are we? On there. Okay, so there's a sense line comes in. It's got a 433 resistor just there. I believe it's a sense line. Looks like it's commoned up to this one here as well. It's two 433s in parallel. And the other one goes down to that IC there. So I think it's probably a voltage divider or something. It's very interesting. But yeah, I mean it all seems to match. And then the other resistor is if I can find where I am on the camera. There we go. Um the R10 just there, that's the other one which comes from the other side which also goes up underneath the IC and disappears, so um, I'm guessing it comes up over here somewhere, probably one of those, probably that pin there. So, yeah, I don't know, I'm, I'm a bit of a mystery, so I cannot find anything wrong with it, so if anyone else has got one of these things, these VC20s, or VC2, sorry, just let me know if you see the same issue or not, that would be quite interesting. So I just uh, thought I'd plug in my little USB monitor on this thing and uh, and monitor the actual current usage going so it seems that it all the current monitor wasn't working on here and that's something interesting so let's gonna plug it in again and I'll show you again so you know it's a, it's, you know it sits a half an app like it was before and then suddenly it drops see that now it's got batteries in that's no difference before I, had, I put the batteries in afterwards and it didn't change but if I turn it on the batteries in it does change now the interesting thing about this is that also it doesn't match what the current uses actually is so this is showing about two, uh, 250 milliamps right now but my monitors showing around half an amp it's jumping up and down quite a bit so um, it sort of it seems to change every time I plug the thing in actually it's different every time which is quite interesting there's no consistency there but it's it's around well, about point four to point six amps right now and this is showing 0.25 so uh, this little current meter here doesn't really tell you that much in you know if it was what was being used by the lead then okay that should go to one amp for a start but it's you know it's half so maybe that's um you know per cell maybe that's what it's supposed to be trying to represent but it doesn't actually um, show that really. I mean, if it's per cell, you would have one each side, wouldn't you, really? But um, yeah, it's it's at least it's working. It's charging. I just found it really weird that that didn't work until I plugged it in with the batteries already installed. You couldn't put the batteries in first. Uh, afterwards, sorry. You could plug the power in first, then then put the batteries in because it's different. So you can see it now. Seeing you know, two hundred fifty milliamps, it's working fine. So if I plug it in again. A second, the reset. See if it changes. See now it's gone lower. Now it's gone two hundred milliamps. It seems every time I do it, it's it's different. So let's try again. So you now it's 300 milliamps. So I I don't know where it's getting it really. Let's take this off. Um, so I don't know where that really is coming from because it doesn't make sense really. That is matching the monitor though. That is half what the monitor says. So I'm thinking it's probably an average. It works out the total current, divides it by two, and assumes it's doing equal per cell. Um, Try again. Now it says 350 and it's doing about 700 milliamps. So 
yeah it's but the interesting is it's different every time it's not always the same do it again there you go back to 300 again so and that's doing 600 milliamps so it is a bit odd the way it's working it's not what you would expect it to be just a little warning for us. Right, so that's what I'll show you that the uh, thing does charge properly. It does that anomaly with the ammeter. Now, these are both finished charging. This is actually the second set of batteries I've put in it. So you can see it's flashing up full. It's finished charging. The voltages are 4.2 volts each. But it's still showing 0.5 an amp. So it looks like in its zero state, zero current state, it shows as 0.5 of an amp. Um, it is drawing no current according to the USB meter so it seems they've got a coding bug in here where it's nothing um, it says 0.5 instead of 0 yeah anyway otherwise it seems to work fine so yeah strange have a good one catch you later